you were part of that ideology for a while, a right? similar ideology, what, yeah. what is it that is motivating them to hatred. be effectively neo-Nazis? Hatred. A absolute hatred. Hatred of what? Everything. And in, with National Action in particular, their, their extremism doesn't just stop at neo-Nazism or loving Adolf Hitler. It's far more extreme, it's far more complex, and I think a lot of people understand there's a lot more going on and in behind the organisation. It's the most sophisticated... But, but, but like what? I mean, I mean, what could be worse than hating Adolf Hitler? Than Is hating it... him. Huh? Oh, sorry, yeah. No, what could be worse? You say it's worse. I mean, what could be worse than... Because it's very difficult to define this... Sorry, I mean, I mean, worse than worshipping yeah, Adolf yes, Hitler. Yeah. In other words, where is this extremism well, taking because, these people? Because this, this particular group doesn't just stop at loving ad and admiring Adolf Hitler. In, in our research on them and what we've seen of them, it's far more broader who they like. There's evidence they like Pol Pot. There's evidence that they're excited by the, the, by the Meinhof group. They're, but they're extreme racists? They're, 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 they're anti-establishment? Anti what is it? What is they're, it? They're absolutely everything. They're nihilists. They absolutely hate everything. The group is obsessed with violence. The group is obsessed with murder. Uh, they don't just stop at saying that Hitler was right. We've had them using uh, passages from uh, the Quran to justify what they do. They call it white jihad. It's a group that has gone completely further and more over, the, uh, over the, the bench than ever before. And yet, they've been banned. No. Now, what does banning by the Home Secretary, by the UK government, actually do in practice? Well, uh, National Action have used the El Majaroon uh, example, uh, Anjum Chowdhury's group. That was banned, his other groups are banned, and all they really have done is have a quick change of leader, and started up under a series of new names around the country. They said they'd do that, and they have done that. Last month, we exposed that they had a, a, a warehouse in Warrington where they were meeting regularly to train in, in martial arts and also plan and plotting, carrying out their, their obsessions. The authorities knew nothing about this. They didn't know this existed. And we, we went and we had a look inside. We've followed the group around. They're still active, they're still recruiting. And I think the issue has been, like I said, there's a culture about this group that is far more different than the BNP, far more different than the National Front. They're far more sophisticated. And the, the, the width and the breadth of, of the things that they believe is far greater well, what than is, What I understand. still can't get my head around is, what is creating such blind, extreme hatred? So, I mean, uh, well, it's the, the, the two age-old questions are, where does it come from and, and how do you combat it? Right. But where does it come from? Well, in, in, my, in my personal experience, I, you know, 1980s, I was a Crystal Palace fan, so it was very miserable as a child. Mm. The National Front, as it was then, and then the BNP and, and Combat 18, offered me somewhere to belong. It offered me something that could give answers to all the questions I'd ever had. It could justify them. It, it could but the answer was simply destruction. Of course it is. Well, it always is. Extremism is, it, it, it always leads to that. There's no easy way out of it. And so these organisations offered me somewhere to belong, they offered me friendship, they offered me camaraderie, they, and they introduced me to so many brilliant things like alcohol and violence. I, I went from a very, very small boy... I mean, brilliant things yeah. for you, Brill yeah. brilliant things not brilliant things. But I went from a, yeah, I went from a very, very... When mixed with the... So I remember because... Combat 18 ruining an yeah. England football game yeah. and some of the worst scenes of violence I've ever witnessed yeah. in an England game. I mean, it was a very, very nasty group. But, but, Are they but, still going, Combat 18? Mm, Parts of them. I mean, they're actually very active in, in mainland Europe, less mm. so in this country. But for people who get involved in these organisations, you talk about the horrific things that they do and they say and they think, but for people in those organisations, just us talking about them validates them in many ways. Well, that's an interesting question. We've got this debate coming up later about... We had a debate about gay conversion therapy, so people were enraged, some people, mm. that we'd even give a platform to people doing this. I mean, you know, there is an argument, isn't there, never to mention... These people. My yeah. view is, if Except you drive it underground, then this kind of stuff goes on yeah. and doesn't get rooted out. If doesn't get picked British up. If four British soldiers are arrested on suspicion of being part of this group, there is every justification for talking about. I think yeah, a group. There's, there's a nature and the way that there's a nature and the way that you talk about them. We believe uh, in no platform. So, for instance, we wouldn't have one of them on to talk about his garden and his beliefs and, and that, that kind of thing. Mm. We believe that you, you, know, you don't give them the oxygen of publicity, but it doesn't mean that we can't look at but these groups. But does that mean that people can get away with being members of these groups knowing that they're basically being ignored? Well, the, but the problem is with, with this group in particular, it's very, very sophisticated more than any other group on the extreme far right, um, is that people often don't know that they're, who, who are the members. Yeah. This is one of the very good things that they've done. They've managed to shield their entire membership, even its leadership, 
its new leadership wasn't known. And we always say, don't we, the, the Muslim community should do more to root out Islamic extremists, and they often say, well, we don't often don't know who these people are yeah. in our midst. You're saying it's the same thing with the white extremists who are part of these far-right groups, that actually they might be living next door to you, and you still might not know correct. that they're right-wing extremists. Co correct. Yeah. And, we, and we, you know, far-right extremism in this country existed in the 1920s, mm. 1930s. OK, well, Matthew Collins, thank you very much for giving us that insight. Pretty disturbing, I think. Four British soldiers uh, planning a terror attack in part of a neo-Nazi group. Shocking stuff. Uh, the Ministry of Defence uh, said in this statement, we can confirm that a number of serving members of the army have been arrested under the Terrorism Act for being associated with a proscribed far-right group. This is now the subject of a civilian police investigation.